Welcome to Linwood Election Watch 2013. I'm Teresa Whipple, your host, the publisher of Linwood Today. And we are here with Nicola Smith, who is running for mayor of Linwood. So yes. welcome. Thank you, and thanks for providing this opportunity for us, Teresa. You bet. Uh, love for you to tell uh, people who are watching a little bit more about you and also why you would like to be mayor of Linwood. Well, Linwood, like many of our citizens, it is a place that is a great place to live and work. Um, it's a city I believe in. I have been a resident for 14 years here and I've worked in the city at the second largest public nonprofit institution in Linwood City at Edmonds Community College for 26 years. I've been an administrator there for, for that whole time. And uh, Linwood has such great potential that I want to bring my leadership ability and skills to lead uh, Linwood into the 21st century by refreshing and resetting city services and fiscal stewardship and bringing my professional management <clears throat> and administrative uh, skills to the city staff so that uh, I can motivate and empower them to be the best they can be for our citizens. And we were talking uh, before we started uh, the camera running that, mm -hmm. that you saw a lot of parallels between running Edmonds Community College or running your department mm -hmm. at Edmonds Community College mm -hmm. and running a city. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, when you look up the mayor's job on the website, um, it's a very administrative job and it's managing several departments uh, throughout the city, throughout the city um, hall. And uh, my job at Edmonds Community College has been running similar departments that align pretty well with the city department. So for example, I have been in charge of athletics uh, for a very long time and uh, been the um, Northwest Athletic Associations for Community College uh, Women's Commissioner. And uh, recently, uh, we finished building a multi-use multi uh, turf field on campus. And that was all through my, uh, my leadership and, and um, bringing people together to get that built. So if you think about my work in athletics and bringing the community together to be at a place that uh, serves them well for their wellness, um, Arcs and Rec does the same. And then uh, I also have been managing the housing uh, ever since I started in the international department at Edmonds Community College, but running the homestay family program and we have a good 1,600 people in our database that are Linwood families and approximately 300 to 500 Linwood families are connected with the college hosting our students. And then most recently, uh, I changed the culture of Edmonds Community College by building a residence hall or commonly called a dormitory uh, that houses 183 of our students right on campus. And so I worked very closely with, of course, the college and the city and uh, the state to get permission to build a building like that and then the funders and the developers and um, it was just it was an exhilarating project and it has occupancy to that that sustains it uh, so if you think about planning the planning department and uh, economic development uh, that certainly aligns with that project and uh, then with student leadership and student government working with uh, people in the in the community to help them be the best that they can be uh, I've also set up the uh, Child Care Center, which is now one of the best practiced early childhood learning centers in South Snohomish County. So working with families um, and working with student leaders, has, I just think that it aligns really well with what the mayor uh, is responsible for. Yeah. Well, that answers the next question that I would have oh. asked you, which is <laughs> the kinds of you know, leadership qualities you have that you would bring to the mayor's office, and clearly you've been doing a lot of a lot of leadership. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I am naturally, I motivate and empower staff to be the best they can be and to really provide quality services to people, um, our constituents. And I think that uh, with my leadership skills in being civil and respectful and uh, letting people do their job, I attract people who are professional people and I surround myself with people who really know how to do their job. I empower them, I bushwhack for them so that they can get the training they need to be the best they can be, and I let them go. And um, uh, it's been a very successful way of managing people, and of course with respect and um, inclusion. <clears throat> and then uh, be, I also uh, bring stakeholders to the table, and I really believe that you've got to have all your stakeholders, all the constituents who are interested in an issue or a program or something coming down the pike, 
that they're at the table and we're having inclusive discussions and um, consensus decision making on where we go with our programs and services. And, and you said that people in the community actually came to you and asked you to run. Why do you think that is? I think, uh, well, I'm a proven leader. The, I've also been very involved and I'm a past president of the Linwood Rotary Club and the Linwood Rotary Club its membership includes brilliant leaders and business owners and community um, program managers uh, in Linwood and it was actually a group of them that came and said Nicola please provide the city an opportunity uh, and, and say yes you'll run for mayor um, and I thought about that and I thought about doing it four years ago, but now I think professionally and, well, I know, professionally and personally, I am ready to, to make that leap into being mayor. Uh, I'm not a politician, and I think people are looking for this sort of refresh and reset, a perspective coming in from somebody who's a proven leader and uh, is ready to um, move the city forward. Well, let's talk a, about a few issues that have kind of been uh, coming to the forefront, and one of them actually kind of involves your current employer, and that is the golf course. Yes. Um, that has been uh, something that people have been talking about just mm -hmm. because of not really sure what the answer is to making sure it's financially uh, sustainable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts about you know, kind of next steps on that? Well, the City Council's already voted a next step, which is to bring in a consultant to review and analyze uh, what the golf course could be and should be. So at this point, uh, I, we wait for the professionals to come in and say, here are some of our recommendations. Uh, the discussion is, do we give it up? Do we uh, keep the city staff managing it? Or do we hire a golf company like Premier to come in and professionally run the golf course? Uh, the college is a stakeholder in the golf course just as much as the city because they were, were supposed to be sharing any profits, so the college is very interested in the golf course being successful. And for the city, it's got to be a profit center. Other, and, and I think that's really hard for a golf course, so I think it's a hard conversation, and I just would encourage the people who know most about golf and running a golf course uh, come to the table and move forward. Okay. And... Another issue that has been talked about quite a bit lately has been um, light rail coming to Linwood uh -huh. um, and some of the conversations that are being had around that. Of course, the city council came out opposing the maintenance yard that Sound Transit wants to, to put um, in, in Linwood. And, um, but nonetheless, bringing light rail to Linwood will create some, some changes. There will mm -hmm. be some uh, developmental issues and other things, what kinds of things do you see are going to be a challenge for the city moving forward as, as the rail comes to town? I think that the city of Linwood will honor its heritage. I think the city of Linwood will be able to preserve good neighborhoods and at the same time the city of Linwood has to embrace the 21st century and light rail coming through Linwood is inevitable uh, in my opinion. Uh, we don't want to be jumped over and not have light rail <laughs> stop in Linwood, and already we're such we're in such a beautiful intersection of um, the freeways and the highways, uh, and so we're so accessible that I just think that we've got to figure out how to make it be as less painful as it possibly can be, and yet I think it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. And of course, as long as we're talking about uh, getting to some hot button issues, what about the whole uh, red light camera? Do, no, do you... <laughs> that's an issue. <laughs> well, some people say, oh, nobody cares about that anymore. And other people say, no, I've been doorbelling and they still care about that. So what are you thinking? What have I you have found? been doorbelling. And when I uh, first announced my candidacy to my peers at the college, uh, that was the first thing that came up and said, when you're mayor, you will be changing those red light cameras. And I said, really? <laughs> Uh, I've, I've heard uh, all sorts of perspectives about the red light cam cameras and it's certainly an issue for people and one way or another. I had a wonderful ride along with Sergeant Brooks with the police department. We spent nine hours together and from the police side it's a public safety issue and I think the cameras were installed for public safety. From the constituents, the visitors to, I've had businesses say I don't even, I, I've lost business because of them. People won't come into Linwood and I'm like why? Because they don't ever stop at red lights? Or, I mean, what's that about? <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then uh, residents who said, I, I travel a different route now because I can't stand sort of being either watched by the red camera or uh, potentially getting a ticket that is really a lot of money. Yeah. And I, you know, drivers aren't going out and trying to intentionally break the law. Um, uh, but what I would say for the red light camera is um, I, becoming mayor, I think it's time to probably do a thorough program in the service and again, listen to the issues citizens and visitors and our police have with regard to them. And maybe it needs to be readjusted. Mm -hmm. Maybe they go away, maybe they don't, maybe the tickets aren't so costly. Um, so it's got, it's got to be evaluated clearly. Okay. Because I think it's, it's uh, the perception that Linwood is an unfriendly place to come. The red light cameras are being blamed on that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that shouldn't be. It's interesting you use that phrase about being unfriendly because another um, question that was asking people who have been in Linwood for a long time, what would you ask if you were me? And one of them was, well, um, keep hearing that Linwood is not necessarily the most friendly place for small businesses to, mm -hmm. to be and there's some roadblocks. And Have you heard that? Constantly. And of course, uh, coming from uh, Rotary, they're, this, they're the business people of the community. and. Uh, this is where I feel like I can come in with my leadership skills and really work with city staff to figure out how to provide good customer service. And instead of putting up perceived, because uh, there's the city side of, of how things have to be, of course, but uh, putting up perceived barriers of being a, putting up barriers to people getting permitting or zoning or licensing, uh, that, that, can, that needs to switch around. And the city staff need to be perceived as being people who will help help people be successful in Linwood. And at the end of the day, who feeds Linwood? It's the small cities and the taxes that we have on them and their, this new employment tax, which is also a huge uh, problem for small businesses in Linwood. Uh, it, it's the hand that feeds Linwood. So it's unclear to me why would the city even think about letting a perception go out there that they didn't want to be helpful and friendly to small businesses. That doesn't make sense to me. And so that, it's got, that's got to change. Mm -hmm. Either the services have to change, well, and it's probably services need to be adjusted a bit, and, and uh, the city needs to really honor people who want to come here and do business. And as long as it's fitting within our coding and our guidelines, um, we should be perceived as a, a really welcoming place for businesses to come. Mm -hmm. And somebody else had mentioned that big jump in the fee, was it from 18, 15 to $85? Yes, it um, was. And it, of course that's part of a bigger issue, which is that you know, Linwood, like many cities, is facing budget problems and mm -hmm. trying to figure out ways to solve that. Um, as somebody who wants to be mayor, what, how would you tackle that big question of trying to balance the budget when there's obviously holes in the revenue sources and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all that? The city needs to live within its means with its budget. Uh, I think it's gotten out of whack and we can use the excuse because of the economic depression, but other cities didn't suffer like the Linwood budgets suffered. This, the employment tax and even the cameras have been considered an easy out, an easy way for the city to make money. And, and we, don't, we don't need to be slapping on taxes and fees and um, raising permitting costs or, or whatever the city is doing to, to make an easy buck to balance the city budget. The city budget has to have a, a, some sort of balance from the core of that budget and not be raising fees to, to support it. It's, that's not a fiscally sound way, nor is it sustainable to, to manage a city budget. Mm -hmm. So let's get at the core problem and uh, let the city and city employees live within the means that we have. Mm -hmm. I've worked as a state employee for 27 years, and in the past eight years, I have not had one pay raise. Classified staff at the college took a 3% cut. They didn't get a full health package benefit for all part-time employees at the college. So people who are in these jobs, which are public servant jobs, uh, need to wrap around the reality that 
they, we've got to live within our budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. And you're, and you're feeling comfortable being able to go in there and kind of make those tough decisions and work with the council to figure that out? Absolutely. I am, I am very inclusive. I bring stakeholders to the table. Uh, I like decisions to be made you know, with the best brains around the table. And not everybody wins and everybody wants something. I get that. Uh, but at the end of the day, if the mayor has to make the tough decision, I'm prepared to do that. Okay. But I don't make tough I, I make tough decisions or I make any decision based on getting the best information I can at the time and then working with people to, to adjust or, or, uh, or provide services that or not provide them that we can, you know, that, that work for the city budget. Mm -hmm. And speaking of providing services, um, you know, re researching the, the census, the latest census for Linwood and kind of seeing how the demographics have really changed over the years, you know, certainly more diverse, um, more senior citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you've got those demands for services and you've also got um, an average income that is about $18,000 um, a year less than than the county average, I think. Hmm. Um, how do you, again, as mayor coming in, um, address those issues and figure out, you know, you've got a lot of demands on your resources and yet you have, you know, people who are demographically or otherwise needing some help or, you know, maybe affordable housing, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's fabulous that Linwood is so diverse. Um, it brings a, a reason to celebrate living in Linwood. <clears throat> and, and diversity is not just uh, people of color or race or religion, it's people of different thought, people mm -hmm. with disabilities, people who are older, people who are younger. Uh, and you know, we face the same issue at the college. What services do we put forward to serve the constituents? And it's a constant flux of figuring out how to fund programs and services to meet the needs of your current constituent group. So uh, change is, is inevitable when we're trying to serve all sorts of different populations. Housing is, uh, is incredible. Uh, the, the college and the, the community and the city was uh, really surprised when we started a homeless housing project for our students and we said there is a good 150 students who come to Edmonds that live in their cars or they live in sandy cans around. And here are these students who are trying to become better citizens of the world and, and get an education, uh, but they're living in, in really dire situations. So the students at the college put together a club called Project Home Association, and they have raised thousands of dollars in order to have two different units at the YWCA where we house our homeless students. Uh, and so it, even just little things like that are really important and I think that the city alone can't serve all the needs of everybody. We have got to work in partnership. We've got to work in partnership with the schools and um, other community groups and really leverage our resources so that we can have the best possible programs and services for people. And we, we don't get to stop there. Uh, Linwood has not been a player in Snohomish County. Um, we haven't showed up. And I think that we have the potential and the opportunity and really the obligation to, to bring Linwood into Snohomish County as a player. And what do you mean by that? Uh, um, we have not, my understanding is that the city has not participated in leveraging partnerships with the cities around us um, and, and has been sort of this standalone island where <laughs> Uh, it, there's there's so much potential. We have so much to give, and others want to play with us because we're we could be the big guy in the block after Everett. And uh, I know, I mean, look at the golf course. We talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. The city should be working hand in hand with the college to put the best brains around to figure out how to make that service and that program work. But the city has tried to do that solo, and I think that a better decision could happen if the stakeholders were all at the table making those decisions. And you think that's an attitude that comes from the mayor's office on down? I do. Mm -hmm. okay.
what do you think, when you think about um, trying to define Linwood, this is a conversation I've had with a few people over the last couple of weeks, you know, there's, there's no one place that you can point to necessarily that you say, oh yeah, that's Linwood. I mean, people think of the mall, but, but mm -hmm. kind of the heart, the soul of the city. Mm -hmm. how, how would you define that or how would you like to see it if you had your way of being able to change it? I want my young family I became a grandma last year, and I, another one's coming out any week, <laughs> this week maybe. <laughs> I want Linwood to be a community, a place where families want to be and raise their families and have enough uh, services and programs and activities so that they can engage in the city. We've got to bring back our pride. The first thing, I know we're talking about building the community center and how that's been an angst for a lot of developers and uh, people. And I don't know that there's a great place for a community center, but we've got to figure out a way to put together spaces and places so that people feel like they can come together and celebrate as a community. I got the, uh, what was it called? It's called the Linwood Hometown Value Coupon mm -hmm. book. And I'm looking through the coupons to see where am I gonna get a coupon for. And finally I get to the calendar. There's a community calendar for June, July, and August. Linwood had two events out of the three months that were listed there, and every other community event was from Shoreline or Malik Terrace or Everett or Edmonds. It's a travesty that Linwood has not invested in bringing community programs to the, to the people of Linwood. And uh, that, that has to be dealt with. We're the only city in this area that doesn't have a festival. Mm -hmm. Why is that? <laughs> and and, and how, do you, how do you do that? I mean, I, it's been interesting because I, of course, am real familiar with what Edmonds does. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, their Chamber of Commerce is a very big driver. A lot of people don't know this. They think it's the community that does it or the city that does it. But mm -hmm. the truth is, is they have a very active chamber mm -hmm. that drives mm -hmm. a lot of their events. Um, but the city puts on a fair amount as well. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you, in a city the size of Linwood, how do you get something like that started? Where would you start as mayor? Well, you bring people together who, who can make things happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Linwood Rotary did a high five run as a fundraiser for about three years until we figured out that we really didn't have all the expertise we needed to do that. Mm -hmm. And we had to work very closely with the city but the city was willing to close off the roads for the run um, and, and make it a big community event. The mall gave space. So I think if we bring enough people together to, to plan these events, um, then they're the stakeholders of it. And of course, why wouldn't businesses want to be sponsors and, and, and be part of it? It brings in business, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so it's a matter of um, invigorating and, and encouraging and motivating all the constituents, the, the, the voters, the residents, the businesses, the visitors, uh, to come together and plan something that would be meaningful. And we can start even with our diverse celebrations. The city does do a great job with the college and other stakeholders uh, for the Martin Luther King celebration. And um, there's lots of other celebrations that we could be doing within our diverse community and that doesn't take up a whole lot of space but it certainly does showcase our diversity and bring those communities together and visitors to to, to learn about them the food festival is the other big uh, community gathering and what did that take it took a few committed people the uh, verdant grant people and the college and the city to come together and say let's do something about wellness and fitness for for linwood and let's do this and it's been a good success what do you, what, how would you define Linwood's greatest strength and greatest weakness? Well, the greatest strength is, is our location, location, location. Uh, we have great parks. We have great uh, access in and out to, to our city. Uh, we have a great safety program. It's a very safe place to be. <clears throat> and uh, so there's a lot of, we have great schools. We have the pool and rec center now. I know that's got to become a profit center as well, but um, there are there are great things about Linwood. And it's easy. I don't even like going downtown anymore for anything to downtown Seattle because it's all right here in Linwood. I get in my car, I go there, I find parking. 
I get what I need and, and I get back home to my, my nice place where I live. And uh, so there's, there's lots of things that we can build on. Uh, the weakness is uh, that I feel like in the last uh, decade, we have not been able to implement some of the great ideas that, for example, the 2005, 2006, and then again in 2009 visionary um, vision um, uh, conversations. And the, and the, and the, it, Linwood has a great vision statement. It has pages of things that Linwood can be and, and wants to enhance and, and should be. Uh, but it's, it's been interesting that over the years that the city hall, city staff, mayor, city council have not been able to implement any of that. And I think it's really time to take a look at those documents, which are good. It's good information, lots of input from our constituents in Linwood. And let's get moving on implementing it. And for some reason, the current group has not been able to implement these good ideas. And okay, let's say it's because of budget. Well, it's about prioritizing mm -hmm. your budget. And, and what about the, and there was a great um, branding mm -hmm. report that came out and there's little tidbits of the brand on things like city hall's name tags and letterhead and on the website. But the presentation of Linwood, you come in any road that you land in on, uh, your, first, your first thing is weeds. Well, who made weeds the flower of choice of Edmonds or of Linwood, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I said Edmonds because I'm thinking of those beautiful flower baskets, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> we can do that. Right. I remember the day we got off of the 44th exit and there's the big welcome to Linwood sign and it had beautiful bright flowers, mm -hmm. seasonal flowers around there. And over the years, the flowers have died and the weeds have taken over. It's mm -hmm. like, Welcome to Linwood. So we really need to, to perk up our presentation. And I'm an enthusiastic gardener. I take pride in my private property. Okay. And You'll be planting those flowers in the I'm, flower boxes. I'm then. gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you know, we are, it's gone by so quickly, but we're actually at the end of the program. And so it's time for you to tell voters when they see your name on the ballot, what do you want them to remember? And if there's anything else in terms of a website or another way that they might be able to find out more about you? Well, remember, I have, I'm not a career politician, uh, but I am a career public servant. And I am really, really enthused to, to be elected as mayor. The more I'm out there talking with people, the more enthused I am that my skill set and my leadership abilities, um, it's the right time for this to happen for the city. And, so here I am bravely providing the opportunity for people to have a reset and a refresh of Linwood. Uh, and I hope that I'll be remembered as someone who has the skill and ability and the enthusiasm to come in and really move Linwood through some positive change into our 21st century. And yes, I do have a website, nicolaformayor.com. And Nicola uh, with a C, right? Yes, Nicola with a C. Uh, and I've got a comment page on there and I would love to hear from people. And, and, and I will res I'll respond. I'm a very, very responsive leader, and I would just love to hear from people and, and hear what their continuing issues are. And we're going to make it past the primary and on to mayor. Okay. Well, thanks again for coming by, and good luck to you. Thank you very much, Teresa. Yeah, you bet.